Hello and welcome to another video where I look at a favourite feature on a piece of music gear. Um, in this video I'm actually going to look at two uh, machines. One um, model samples from Electron, which is a sample player. Um, and the other is 1010 Music's Black Box, which they describe as a sample studio. Um, and that does give you some indication of the range of tasks that you can complete in the one machine. Um, they are both very enjoyable and easy to use. Um, they're designed, I think, to get you going as quickly as possible and have many applications in the studio and especially live and uh, are very enjoyable to use in a live context. Um, anyway, I'll be looking at my favorite feature on each of them. Um, on the model samples, it's a built-in feature that uh, uh, you're very much encouraged to use. On the um, black box, I choose something which is, let's say, a creative misuse of one of the uh, built-in practical ways it has of dealing with samples. Um, Okay, so I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so now we have the two pieces that we're going to look at side by side. We've got the 1010 Music Black Box, which describes itself as a sample studio. And we have the Electron Model Samples, which is a sample player. Um, so I'll just say a couple of things about each of them um, as an introduction for people who are unfamiliar with them and just as a way of getting us started uh, to explain why I'm looking at what I'm looking at. So the um, model samples from Electron represented a radical departure for Electron, um, a spectacular simplification of how the Electron world works. It does contain a fully functional electron sequencer, which is hugely complex in its applications and implications. Um, but the machine is designed that everything is accessible from the front panel. There are some double layers with the buttons and the um, encoders, but the only menus you need are for saving and set and leave type settings. Um, generally speaking, um, you can get to everything you need to get started straight away from the front panel. This represents a dramatic departure for Electron. Um, for instance, their wonderful flagship sampler, the Octatrack, is notoriously difficult to use and does have a steep learning curve. With tremendously satisfying results, it has to be said, but the principle of the model samples is really plug in and play and let's get going. The 1010 Music Black Box is a very, very capable new sampler and represents quite a new spin on what the sampler is and how it integrates and what it does. So you do have menus with each of these pages, but the touch screen is so nice to use and works so well, you actually are able to use the menus on the go as part of the instrument. Um, there are other applications too. Um, it is a very, very broad sampler. I mean, it calls itself a sampling studio and indeed you can go all the way through to building songs. Uh, you can edit and add effects to samples. You can layer them, sequence them, etc., etc. You can resample them. It has uh, six outputs, um, which is to say three stereo outputs. Um, it can record CV, so it integrates very well with modular. It has um, CV clock in and out, but you can record analog LFOs and. Um, um, uh, envelopes and so on, you, you can record them as audio and then play them back as CV, um, which is an astonishing thing for a sampler to be able to do. And 
of course, uh, very, very useful should you want to record your CV changes. Um, so yes, it's definitely built with the future in mind. Um, I will concentrate uh, for today on the pads window, which is the window where you edit uh, samples um, and make the settings for the incoming samples. Uh, we'll return now to the Electron model samples, which is a sample player, which is to say you load up samples into the memory. It doesn't sample live. Um, yes, so the plug in and play aspect, the front panel aspect is the great change with model samples. And what I wanted to show you is um, how quickly you can get into a certain kind of granular synthesis with really tremendous results. So I prepared just a simple loop. Um, there's some variation built into the loop using the fantastic trig conditions, which is uh, one of the astonishing parts of the um, sequencer in the electron devices. So it adds these probabilistic functions to very simple loops, thus making them much more interesting and much more full of variety. But I've tried to keep things simple, and I'm going to focus on track two, which is the um, snare sound that you're hearing. And what I'm going to do first is just loop the snare sound. And you'll immediately hear it has a sort of staggered delay effect going on. Um, and when I start to reduce the sample length, you'll hear this, uh, these repeats getting faster and faster. And uh, after about halfway, we start going into this familiar granular type sound where the little uh, sections of sample become so short they get sustained into single tones. You can then use a sample start to go through the uh, from the other direction so to speak of which part of the sample that's now being looped very very fast create the sustained sound. You can use a decay to increase or decrease the sustain. Um, obviously you can use the pitch and any other feature and in combination to uh, get these um, very interesting um, granular results. And then the electron sequencer being what it is, tight as you like, you can go right back to the original loop. Um, so yeah, you can see with a couple of twists of a couple of knobs, you're right in there with some uh, uh, very interesting results. Um, one of the great features of the model samples is the return of the control all feature, which was a feature on the original, a much loved feature on the original electron drum machines. And what this does is when you hold it down, it applies parameter changes to all tracks simultaneously, uh, depending on what you've uh, parameter locked in the sequencer. So it can have some very different results on different sounds and different kinds of sequences. Um, and obviously the way in which a decay parameter will affect a snare is very different from how it will affect a kick drum. So, uh, the results are extremely interesting. So if we go into this granular world uh, using the control all feature, we'll get into some quite interesting chaos very, very quickly, as I'll show you now. The original. So that is the fabulous sample loop feature on the electron samples. So I'll turn straight to the black box now. 
uh, pad one of the black box is listening in to um, the signal of the model sample. So you can see here the um, levels are the incoming model samples. I've set it to take a two bar sample and the model samples is synced to the black box. I'm sorry, the black box is synced to the model samples. So it will take a quite precise two bar loop, which I'll ask it to do now. So you can hear that quite pleasant um, phasing effect, although it's quite tight. So if I go into the sample menu now, um, many of these features can be mapped to MIDI controllers very simply using a, a, learn, um, a uh, learn button. Um, I'll just do it from the front of the black box now because it's also possible to do that. So we have a filter, which uh, logically enough is turn right for high pass, turn left for low pass. But yeah, it's pretty fluid, pretty tight and quite musical. Um, we have pitch too, which similarly is not just for settings, it does have live applications, there's no question. Um, and if I go to miscellaneous, we'll now look at the feature I find very interesting. So it has here something called beat count, which you can see is set to auto. Um, so what this does is analyze a, a new, newly sampled sample or, or um, a sample that's playing and decides how many beats it has to fit it in as coherently and musically as it can to the tempo, whatever that might be. You can see that it's syncing to a 16th notes, which means it's taking a, a count every 16th note, so to speak. Um, and it does this automatically and then sets itself and stays happy. However, you can go away from auto and start adding large numbers of beats. So a two bar loop um, uh, sync to 16th notes would have 32 16th notes, but you can start adding far, far more, or at least telling the black box to treat it as if it was made of far, far more. This, I think, has very interesting results. So you can hear the black box, so to speak, trying to count every 16th note and doing so in quite an interesting way. So if we get these sort of flickering type sounds going and then we can change the sync to 1 8 so it'll start trying to count every eighth note and then every quarter note um, and then every half bar and as you can see it's now acting as though it were 256 beats of half a bar uh, the maximum is 512 by the way and you can take it down to one bar you can also do it to a slice if you've sliced up the sample which i haven't in this case so we will leave that so yes i think this has very 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 interesting results depending on the material and uh, what sync you've left. It's very, very interesting with vocals and with verbal things with text. And you can use it in conjunction with um, like the filter very interestingly. And then start to add effects. Very, very interesting. And it does so 
in a way which of course deviates a lot from the original loop but it still somehow fits in quite nicely it doesn't go completely bananas it's it's it's, it's really quite usable um, so it makes the simplicity of the original loop quite useful so to speak Yeah, so that's the beat count feature here on the black box. I'll just mute the original loop so we can go out listening to the crazy 189 beat counts of 16th notes syncing from the black box. So yeah, that was the sample repeat feature from the model samples and the beat count from the black box please feel free to like and subscribe and to check out my soundcloud or band uh, 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 bandcamp pages you can find the links below this video thank you very much for watching Thank you.